The history surrounding the discovery of many of our native plant species is fascinating, especially for us plant nerds. One of the most interesting, strange, and sad tales is that of the Franklin tree, Franklinia alatamaha, a beautiful member of the tea family that once graced the wilds of North America with its unique and stunning presence. Yes, I said once graced the wilds. Franklinia is to the best of our knowledge extinct in the wild and has been for quite some time, but it is still with us in cultivation. To understand the bizarre history of this charming little tree, we need to start with its scientific discovery. The year was 1765 and a father and son botany duo, John Bartram and his son William, were exploring the Altamaha River Valley near the location of Fort Barrington in search of new plant species and species of interest. During their excursions near the fort in October, they came upon what John described in his journal as a small grove of very curious shrubs. This was the first encounter the Bartrams had with what would later be named the Franklin Tree. If you love to learn about the history and discovery of our native flora, like the amazing Franklin Tree, then go on your own journey of exploration and discover that like button. William would return to that area on a collecting trip several years later in 1773, a trip that would last until 1776 and cover much of the southeast. In case you are wondering how a botanist could afford to go on a three year long trip to collect plant samples, these types of trips were often funded by individuals who had an interest in such things but might not have the time or ability to partake in this type of excursion themselves. This three year botanical exploration was funded by Dr. John Fothergill, who lived in London and was not only a medical doctor but also an avid plant collector. Some of you may recognize his last name because it is the basis for the genus name Fothergilla, our native witch alders. During this trip, William Bartram was able to collect seed from the grove of curious shrubs and brought those seeds to his home in Philadelphia in 1777. William kept a detailed journal during his three-year exploration of the Southeast. And it is an excellent first-hand account of the plant and animal life he encountered, as well as his interactions with the Native Americans that live there. If you love history, and especially if you love learning about what America looked like a couple of hundred years ago, his journal is a must read. Lucky for us, it is still being printed today, and I will put a link to it in the description. William was able to get the seeds he collected from the curious shrubs to germinate and grow in his Philadelphia garden, and they produced their first flowers in 1781. He continued to study the trees he had growing in his garden, and after several years assigned a scientific name to what he referred to as a rare and elegant flowering shrub. He chose to place the shrub into a new genus, Franklinia, which he named after his good friend, Benjamin Franklin. The specific epithet, that would be the species part of the name. Alatamaha refers to the river which the grove of Franklinia was found growing next to. Both John and William Bartram refer to the beauty of this shrub, so I should probably take a few minutes to describe it before we get to the sad and even more bizarre part of the story. Franklinia is one of those woody species that can grow more like a single trunked or multi trunk small tree or a multi stemmed large shrub. Either way, it normally will reach 10 to 25 feet in height with a 6 to 15 foot spread. The crown tends to be pyramidal when the trees are younger and then becomes round as the trees age. And amazingly, trees planted together seem to be almost identical to each other. The leaves are long and narrow and an attractive glossy green that becomes an awesome display of brilliant red, orange, and yellow in the fall. The foliage is also used as a host plant by the impressive Promethea moth. The real eye-catching trait of Franklinia, though, are its large white, yellow-centered, sweet-scented blooms which start in midsummer and last until the first frost. The flowers are attractive to both native bees and honeybees, butterflies, and hummingbirds. To top things off, it also has cool looking seed capsules that will hold on the tree through the winter, and bark that has one of the most eye catching patterns you will find on a native shrub. Franklinia is truly a species with four season interest in the yard or garden. Now that you know how awesome Franklinia is, it's time for the sad, weird, and deeply interesting part of the story. William did try and relocate the grove of Franklinia once again after the American Revolution with no success. The last verified collection of a specimen was in 1803, although there are anecdotal reports of wild specimens being found into the 1840s. It is likely, however, that Franklinia was in fact extinct in the wild before that. 
So what caused it to disappear? There are many theories ranging from overcollection to a disease or being washed out in a flood or destroyed by some other natural disaster. But there is one theory that seems to be the actual answer to the mystery. Franklinia seems to have been a glacial relict, a plant clinging to existence in a small pocket where it could escape the cooler temps of the last ice age. There are a couple of species that are still with us that exist in the wild in similar geographically restricted pockets. The Florida Torea, Torea taxifolia, and the Florida U, Taxus floridana which are clinging to existence along a short stretch of the Apalachicola River, much like Franklinia was along the lower Altamaha River. The Franklin tree is thought to disperse its seeds with water, which poses a problem when the waterway you live on flows south and you need to disperse north to escape the warming temps as the glaciers retreat. It is very likely that the small grove of Franklinia the Bartrams found was the last of their kind, clinging precariously to their existence in a landscape that was changing faster than they could adapt to it. There is some modern evidence for this, as there was a Franklinia reintroduction effort made during 2002 and 2003 at the Altamaha Wildlife Management Area in Georgia, near the location where Franklinia was first discovered. None of the trees planted survived. Trees grown in northern states like Pennsylvania and Ohio seem to flourish, though. Luckily for Franklinia, and for us, the Bartrams did find that small grove of curious shrubs, and William was able to grow them from the seed he collected. Franklinia is now found in botanical gardens all around the world, and is still grown and planted as a specimen tree in North America. And it is quite safe from total extinction. After you heard the description of the tree, and saw how beautiful it is, you were probably wondering why everyone isn't growing it. It seems like such an awesome yard tree. Well, it is an amazingly beautiful shrub, but that beauty comes with some cost in growing it. Franklinia is generally considered one of the harder species to grow. Not because it doesn't do great in the right conditions, because it absolutely will, but because it can be so darn picky. It requires acidic, well-drained, moist, sandy loam soils with high organic matter. If the soil is too dense, no clay soils for Franklinia, or too wet, Franklin tree tends to develop root rot and die. If you have clay soils, you can still have a Franklin tree. It will just have to go in a raised bed with a proper soil mix. On the flip side to this, it is also not drought tolerant at all. If the soil starts to get dry, you will have to water the tree or lose it. Franklinia also hates to have its roots disturbed, so be sure to put it where you and it will be happy with the placement. Trying to move it later will not end well most of the time. This is also a tree that tends to struggle when planted in urban conditions for some reason, so keep that in mind. If you happen to be living on an old cotton field, Franklinia is probably not a great option as it can be infected with a pathogen carried by cotton. If you have some experience propagating and growing some of the tougher species, I encourage you to give Franklinia a try. It is well worth it if you are successful. Thanks to William Bartram, all Franklinia growing today can trace their existence to seeds he collected and grew in the late 1700s. Crazy. While Franklinia's story of discovery and loss in the wild, all in the span of 38 years, is fascinating. There is a native edible fruit, actually a couple of them, that are the basis for one of our most popular berries, the Garden Strawberry, which has its own crazy story. And you can learn all about it in this video and be sure to get out and enjoy nature in your backyard.